Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Airblade Eclair version 2. Bottom plate is measuring 2.67 millimeters. Side plates are measuring 1.84 millimeters. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting 128 millimeters. I built mine with a micro run cam. Airblade 1104 7500 kV motors. F4 flight controller with an OSD. 10 amp 4 in 1 ESC. VTX02. F4 Sky XM. I use DYS 3045 props. It weighs 80.6 grams. And it is tough. Being this a build, there's not too many things to go over here. Um, pretty much you want to see how it flies and maybe you want to see if it can take some damage. And I'll tell you one thing, this has got to be one of the tougher frames I have flown. I've had an especially poor period of flight and that means we had a lot of extra crashes. And unfortunately, I was sometimes flying and not recording because I was flying so terribly I didn't think it was worth recording. Well, we have those crashes, but we've got a few here rolling. Um, and in one particular case, I think I lost the flight footage. I've looked for it already. I centered this thing right on a sizable tree stump. The tree just hit flat. Um, I did lose a bell off of one of the motors on that crash. But, you know, when we crash, we should expect things like that. 
Um, and speaking of motors, uh, I went with the Airblade motors because I wanted to build something that essentially you could either buy all the parts from Airblade uh, that can look like promotion or something, but, you know, ease of shopping use, or I think he'll even build you one. At one point in time, he offered a build service on his website. Uh, I don't know if he's still doing that or not. So uh, I always think you get a lot more out of micros when you build them versus just buying them off the shelf. Uh, I see a lot of reviews where vehicles are seen as really, really good, and they're comparing them to other RTFs. They're not comparing them to what you build. And I, I think it's a little unfair to something like this that um, – is really a frame and then you assemble all the parts of your choosing and th these come out these always come out way better than any RTF so if you're skittish about building or you haven't built before and you don't want to take on that risk you know have somebody like uh, Mr. Airblade if he still offers it service check out his website airbladeuav.com or Adam Douglas Adam Bomb FPV he'll probably chime in down below uh, he is always building if you follow the micro brushless group on Facebook I think he's got a build picture every day. I don't know when he sleeps, but he's always building. And he's built several for me, so I can vouch for his craftsmanship. This is a very tough vehicle. These components, I really enjoyed this. A couple things that I learned, you see that I have my antennas kind of up here. And I did that intentionally because, uh, you know, I have a fair bit of camera tilt. And that's kind of how I like to fly. I like to zoom around. And uh, this, I thought, was fairly secure. But oddly enough... Um, I had an issue where it just kind of fell out of the sky, but, well, I say sky, it was probably only about six foot off the air, uh, but it ended up pulling this antenna plum off, um, and it was this antenna, I found it, but I didn't notice that, so I just kind of went over and looked at it, and I was like, what the heck's going on? Because, you know, it just kind of stopped flying. Um, um, it actually was a flight controller reset, so I picked it up, unplugged the battery, plugged it back in. Uh, oh, well, everything looks fine. You know, the beeper's going off. It says it's ready. So I set it down and take it off for another flight. The, the battery was fairly well depleted, so I probably only threw, flew for 45 seconds, maybe a minute. And then I landed it, and I one of the few times I land, uh, went over and picked it up, and I noticed that the antenna was gone. I was still getting video. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Um, but I was surprised that the VTX still lived. So that was something I learned is that you know, without the antenna, it doesn't fry itself immediately. And I've had it probably for uh, six to ten flights since then. And I popped the same. I found the antenna, like I said, and I popped it right back on. And it looked, the video looks just as good as before. So I don't think it's damaged in any way. Now, your results might vary. I think there's a big variance in, in manufacturing sometimes in some products that we get. Um, sometimes these flight controllers will work great. Sometimes it'll take forever before this flight controller. This is the F4, which I've indicated is can be problematic. I've been using them a lot and kind of learning little different things about them. But I've noticed some of these boards, you, you can't arm them right away. You have to let them sit after they give you uh, all your tones that it's ready. That final little beeping tone that it gives you when you're ready to arm, it can sometimes take, I don't know, a minute. And that seems like an eternity. Something else I learned about the F4 is that uh, you can't, well, I haven't been able to flash it using full erase. I've only been able to flash it when I don't have any of the sliders on. So in other words, it's just writing the software over the top. If you do use full erase, you probably find that you get uh, locked out. You won't be able to get access through USB, so you'll have to... Uh, short the boot pads, and uh, go into DFU mode. Uh, these motors, I handed to it earlier a minute. I don't think I covered it really well. I, w I went with these motors because they are Airblade products, and I also trust them. I've used, I think I've built four or five vehicles with these Airblade motors. Some of 10,000 kV. Oh, my goodness. I just noticed something on this build, and we're all going to get a laugh, and I'm, I'm all red-faced right now, if you could see me. I built this with two different kV motors. Look at this. This is ridiculous. 7,500 kV and 10,000 kV. I got my motors mixed up. And oddly enough, <laughs> I've got a match set. This is ridiculous. They're 10,000 kV on the back and 7,500 kV on the front. It flies fine. <laughs> oh, I'm embarrassed and very... Uh, I think it's hilarious. It's so funny. Okay, let's go on. So I've... <laughs> So I've built a lot with these uh, motors, and I trust them. I did have one motor uh, that the bell just flew off on a test flight. I think the C-clip was missing. 
but you know, one out of 20, 22, I, I really don't know how many of these motors, these Airblade motors I've had. Um, I find them to be a lot smoother than the DYS motors. I find them to be a lot less noisy. Um, these are, are, these sound good when you spin them up without props. And the DYS, I think there's a huge variance into the balance that you get in the bell. Um, I'm not sure who was making these for Airblade, but I, I like the motors and I like uh, buying from small companies too. So that's kind of why I did that. So if you're not looking for something like this, if, if this design is, does not float your boat, but you're wanting something that can really uh, maybe rip and go hard, I would suggest another Airblade product. We've seen this before on the channel. This is the Bolt. And this little guy uh, can really rip. You can see here I've got 2.5 mil or 2.5 inch props. These are the Rotor X props. You might be wondering why I didn't do that here because it does take the same size props. These props are more quiet and more efficient, and I think they actually provide more thrust. Uh, I saw some tests, and I think that was on there. But these things, I crash so much, they get all bent up, and you get these little waves where the blades aren't smooth anymore, and that seems to come out in the flight characteristics after a few times of bending them back flat whereas these when you bend them they they only bend right at the hub you bend them back and you're all set to go they, it doesn't seem to affect the flight characteristics as much so that's why i didn't use the rotor x props on this particular one because i crash a lot and i don't like having to change out these props i think changing out these props is a pretty much pain uh, but this one this one's lighter and it's obviously using a different camera but you can buy this camera pod and you can put a uh, micro run cam and a vtx inside the camera pod he actually made that not oh i'd say it was shortly after the micro run cam came out that he modified this pod um, but this thing is a rocket and i think if you're probably going to do um any sort of racing you might want to use this i think this also has a lot of potential for um, doing acro flight but you probably won't want camera tilt like that but anyways this is a good product they, uh, they've always got good what appear to be good quality carbon i don't know a lot about carbon i've heard some people discussing it and getting in little arguments online about carbon and what makes it good and what makes it bad so i won't get into that i tell you i haven't broken any of the airblade frames that i've used and i've used three four God, i can't even remember I've used a number of them, and I crash all the time. I hit the trees, I smack into stuff, and I haven't broken a single one. So if you're looking at something that's going to be durable, I think these two products are well worth it. Um, I've got the macaroon frame over here. I'll show it to you. I had to cannibalize this one a little bit. Coming up, I'm going to do a video about 3S batteries. Um, maybe Albert would do another one, and I won't have to do it, but I, I think it's useful information. There's gotten to be a few batteries, and I've seen a few people posting on Facebook and RC groups about batteries. I tend to fly by feel. I don't necessarily use numbers or science or tests on my batteries. I tend to fly by feel, because I think when you have better flights, you tend to go back to those batteries, whether you're thinking about it or not. And speaking of batteries, let me show you one. So this battery took one hell of a hit. I thwacked this thing into the tree just off the patio, and I don't think this one's safe to have in the house anymore. It's actually been sitting out on the back deck in a uh, garbage bag, but um, unfortunately, this, I think, is a good battery. So if you're looking for something to fly with this, I would pick up some of these. Uh, remember, don't get the black and gray, get the blue and gray. They're different kinds of batteries. It has this ridiculous C rating on here. Just use that to identify the battery and uh, get a couple of these. I believe these were good and cheap. I think they were around $9. That's not really cheap. I think the Esheen batteries like this um, are a little bit cheaper. And I know these batteries have been highly regarded on the Esheen Lizard, but when it comes to flying on other vehicles, I haven't tested the Lizard, but I'm not as big a fan about these batteries. There is a huge variance in manufacturing with these things. Look at this. I mean, that's a minor thing. That's the battery casing. But they just did a crap job. And then uh, this one's okay. Let me check the others. I had to put electrical liquid tape around the ends because they... Well, here, I didn't even do a very good job. If you can see that down in there on the ground. Oops, I bumped the camera. Sorry. Right down there. They didn't even get the heat shrink even close to down to the base before they hunt. So, these might be fine. I think they're okay. I don't think they're great. I wasn't happy when I received them because of how they looked and the variants. Um, the leads are different lengths. It, that just kind of makes me nuts because the, need, the leads need to be long enough to where you can get it. For me, for, get these both halfway back at least and I can get my strap through the middle. 
because I want my strap to hold this down. I want it to, my strap to hold that down. Everything's secure. Nothing's flopping around. Nothing's vibrating. Nothing's going to get caught in the props. And these just, I think these are closer to consistent. No, they're not. They're, they're off. Anyways, if you want a good battery, go ahead and get this one. I think you'll be happy with it. No science, just by feel, like I said. The last thing I'm going to cover tonight, and I'll leave you with one more flight, is about XT30s. And some of you have heard this before. But some of these can go in backwards. Uh, they normally go together like this. Of course, we line up our plus and our plus, and then they squeeze together a little bit of resistance in there. Now, this batch I've got here is actually better than the last batch I had. And these came from eBay, of all places. Um, but one of the things I noticed looking back at some of the other vehicles that I have is these corners actually are have more, if you can see that, they have more material in the corners than the ones I've used previously. And also, these corners here on the male side are much sharper. And that keeps them, makes them a lot more difficult to get together. Matter of fact, if I try here now, I'd, I might be able to... Ooh, I almost had it. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't spend a lot of time on that. Be careful, depending upon your XT30s, whether it's um, a build or an RTF, they can go together backwards. I've got a video on it already. This set is better quality. Maybe they're starting to catch on in the manufacturing process that they needed to be a little bit more precise. Okay, that's the Airblade Eclair version 2. Um, okay, one more tidbit I forgot to cover. Props. So I covered why I, I like these props. Your flight times are probably going to be relatively short because you're pushing uh, big paddles on 1104s, and so you probably need 1105s. And you can build this with 1105s. I just chose not to. Um, and as I mentioned, I use these props in this build. Uh, you can also get some of those King Kong props that we have seen on King Kong vehicles and Fly Egg vehicles. They're uh, 2.8 inch props. Uh, you probably have to trim those down a bit, but I had to trim these. The Rotor X props, which I mentioned, those are probably going to be the most efficient, I think, uh, props. So if you're wanting long flight times, you can get some of these. These are durable. It's just, as I said before, when they bend and you bend them back, they tend to develop these waves throughout the blade, and then you can kind of tell that you've got some beat-up props when you're flying. Um, and they're a little bit more expensive, I believe, than all these others. Uh, another candidate we don't talk a lot about, which I think are actually pretty good props, are the Walkiera props. And these are, are very, 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 very similar, if not direct copies. Uh, not copies of the King Kong. The King Kong would be copies of, uh, copies of the Walkieras because the Walkieras came first. But these are also kind of expensive. Uh, but if you wanted to try some different props or maybe you've got a YouTube channel of your own and you want to do some prop testing, test some of these for us. Okay, that's it. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. If you got any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, leave those in the section down below. And thanks for watching.